my father was uh, a Muslim, but he was uh, he had only Hindu friends, and uh, he was devastated by partition. His so after partition, his friends who had left, he sold off their properties and then sent them the money to India. He was also uh, a follower of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. It's very odd, you might say, for a Muslim. But yes, that's the way it was. And uh, I remember uh, him telling us and my mother telling us that they were in Pune. And that's when uh, Gandhiji had placed his uh, hand on my brother's head. So that's uh, non-violence, but I wasn't convinced of non-violence and I'm not uh, totally convinced of it even now. There are times when you have to counter violence with violence. I mean, if you were in, in Nazi Germany, what would you try and preach to Hitler? You couldn't do that. You couldn't do it to Stalin. You couldn't do it to Mao. You couldn't do it in many places in the world, even today. However, as a strategy, I think that it is at times worthy of pursuing. I think that uh, when one party is uh, very weak, then it cannot afford to start violence because it will get crushed. And there were mistakes made uh, by people who have struggled when they have used violence. And I'll give you the example of the Palestinians. They missed out on opportunities when there was the possibility of using nonviolence in Palestine, and they didn't use it. Instead, they got crushed by the Israelis. So I'd say that uh, to me, nonviolence is about strategy. It's to be used when possible, and in other places, it's not possible. Like uh, apes, we have territoriality built into us. Like apes, we get very violent when our tribe uh, is confronted by another tribe. And so these uh, inter-tribal wars are very, very serious, very, very severe. However, they are irrational as humans dies that. And so cooperation effectively trumped competition. What we are seeing now is a form of regression. The point is that you have to keep trying. And so, okay, we didn't bring about peace between India and Pakistan. Yeah, we were just uh, too few. But you know what? If they open the borders, if they let people to cross, they, if they let people cross, and those people can go and see the other side, there'll be a major change of thinking. Yeah. There's always going to be conflict within society, but to demonize the other is uh, very easy to see that they're like us. They're mostly like us. They're 80% like us. That makes a huge, huge difference. And yeah. Uh, the establishments, in particular the Pakistani establishment, now the Indian establishment, now the Indian government too. But the Pakistani government never wanted, never wanted Pakistani citizens to go over to the Indian side. Why? Because then the cause of conflict would be lessened. Then there would be less, uh, th then the population yeah. couldn't be persuaded that we have an imminent threat, a mortal threat from across the border. And so then what would happen to our army? Hmm? The, that's why they don't want a mixing of the populations. I'd say it's, just take a look from space. You see this, <laughs> <laughs> you see this pale blue dot, distant star, you know, that's how Carl Sagan would put it. And uh, all these little fights that we have with each other, they're essentially irrelevant. We are an intelligent species, which uh, has problems, of course, 
those problems arise partly out of intelligence, but a higher use of that intelligence can help us solve those problems.